Hey everyone, welcome back. You are listening to h a n g u g o c h a n j e on TBS EFM 101.3 in Seoul and the surrounding areas. And it is Thursday, which means it is time to up our Korean level here and get that high level Korean with Professor Daniel. Hey, Professor. Good evening. And do you know what? We already got a comment here for you from Shir Yuki. It says, I really want to attend Professor Daniel's class. <gasps> I'm, I'm touched, right? So. But you guys, seriously, I think I tell Daniel this after every segment. I'm always just like, you know... I need to start studying my Saja Songo and I need to start studying my Sokdam because eventually I do need to take the h a n g u g o n u n g y o k s i u m again. And uh, when I do, I need to be prepared. So I always say, if I could study with Daniel every day, I think I would be more than excited to take this test. You make it so much fun and so interesting and so simple, too. Well, this coming from our mobile saying <laughs> in the house here, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not at all. You guys. See, this is what my guests do. They make me blush on my own show. It's not fair. But uh, last week, we had a really good time because we were kind of moving themes into like the animal category. We sure did, yes. Which did. I love because there are so many references to animals, not just in Korean. But in English as well. Agreed. In every language. I'm <laughs> guessing that animals play a, a large role. So. Yeah. And so they're kind of easier in my head to remember than some of the other sokdams or saja songo. It's kind of like you have something to grasp onto in your mind. And so I feel like the ones we learned last week, we, we covered about five of them last week, right? We sure did. Some very tough ones. Too. Yeah. These were not easy, but I actually really liked them. What was that first one we covered? The first one was k u n g e ilhak. Yeah. So again, you kind of broke that down for us here, that kunge irhak, and we were talking about the chickens and having, what was it, the crane, the heron, kind of the crane standing out. The single crane and a flock of chickens. Yeah, yes. standing out amongst the chickens. So that's kind of what this broke down to, right, was that, that chicken flock and then that single crane, the right? The single crane, yes. Yeah. The cream of the crop. Yeah. yeah, and that's basically what it meant. It was just kind of like you stand out so much amongst all the other Whatever, you know, the, the chickens, I should say here. No offense to any chickens. No chickens, yeah. It's, chickens are great. Love chickens. But this is just standing out here majestically. But what was the second one that we covered? Okay, this is a bit harder here. So, to sa gu peng. I remember this because I was trying to get all, like, in my head here thinking, to, is this talking about, like, tang, like, to ji? And you were like, nah, b r a h this is that to ki to. Nice little <laughs> rabbit, right? So, yeah. <laughs> Which I love. So we were talking about the rabbit, but what about the rabbit specifically? So the sa here is jugur sa, so kill the rabbit and then boil and get rid of the dog that caught the rabbit. Yeah, this was the one I wasn't too fond of visually. It was just very graphic to me. Agreed, agreed. Those poor animals. Yeah, but what did that mean exactly if we were going to kind of simplify this? Oh, it's basically killing the dog after the hunt is over. So Mm. you use it and then get rid of it, kind of. Yeah, it's basically that feeling of once you've gotten the use out of whatever it is you're using, you're just kind of throwing it away. Exactly. Pretty much. Which I was not a fan of, so So we're going to move on from that one. Sounds good. And go on to number three. What was that? Oh, this is a much nicer one. So, h a r y o n g j o m j o n g Now, this one here, I think I really remember, I really liked it here because we were talking not just about any sort of painting or work of art. We were talking about like a dragon. We sure were. Yes. A large dragon, a painting of a dragon. Yes. Yeah. And what was so special about that? How did this become this s a j a s o n g o here? Great. So putting the final touch on the dragon in this case, the eye, as it were, right? Mm. So the touch of the eye, right? So, and just that little bit kind of adding on the final touches. So we would, I think in English, we have two phrases that come to mind mm-hmm. the most, which was icing on the cake or cherry, cherry on, on top, top right? Bingo, yes. yeah. I like that little cherry on the cake. Makes yeah. it all better. Right? It, it just kind of, they're, they're both equal. So for any of our English learners, you really can choose either or. They're both the same there. Um, and then this next one here, what was this one, number four? Okay, so once again, we have two animals here. So we have kyun ma ji ro. So this kyun, we had talked about how you'd see it in like a kyun. A kyun, exactly. Uh, and and right. kyun here means dogs. Mm-hmm. We're talking about a dog. And then this ma here was talking about the horse. The horse, that's right. My ma, right? Oh, so. And so what was this last bit here, the c h i r o then? Oh, work ro, right? Mm. So to, to work as... as a dog or a horse would. So, so you kind of said last week that this was saying you're, you're 
giving work, you're doing work, but only as much as a dog or a horse can give. Exactly. So it's good work, but it's not maybe valued as highly as other people's work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is a very interesting concept for me. I still struggle to think when I will will ever need to use this sort of. If if you phrase. can't, you're doing your best, but maybe the other, you're not really helping the other person as much as you'd like to. You could probably conjure that up. It's kind of like I I'm trying to show you that I want to be of help, but maybe I'm not the best. So this is me trying my best to help you with whatever I Bingo. can. Yeah, <laughs> and then finally, this last one here. What was that one? Oh, here's a good one. So. So I remember uh, telling you this last week too that that mok was what stood out to me immediately because I thought of mogyoir. We thought we were talking about uh, trees here. Sure, namu mok exactly. But then I remember we were talking about fish. And we sure were. And so it threw me for a loop. So what does this one break down to? Okay, using the wrong method for the wrong objective. In mm. this case, tying yourself to a tree when you're trying to catch fish. Yeah, it makes. So that's why I was so. confused when I read this. I'm like, you're trying to cheat to catch a fish. That makes no sense. Daniel, why you make no sense today? And then he's like, no, no, no. That's the whole point. It, it makes no sense. It right? makes no sense. So it's Don't do it. Like, exactly. You want to like, catch fish, go to the sea, the East Sea, right? So, exactly. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, this makes sense now. So that was a really like kind of fun lesson that we covered. And I'm so excited to see that this week we're kind of sticking with that whole animal theme as well. We sure are. But we're going to make it a lot easier this week. Oh, yeah. You guys are going to love this. We're starting off with something that I feel like everyone has comments on. So I do want to hear from your guys' is what... Like what your opinions are, maybe if you have heard something different, what are we talking about today? Okay, we are going to talk about one of my favorite topics here, onomatopoeia or i s o n g o Yes, so. oh my gosh, I love talking about these. So i s o n g o here or onomatopoeias, we're talking about usually the sounds that uh, animals make, right? Exactly, and Korea, the Korean language is rich with all sorts of onomatopoeia, especially for animals. Yeah, and you know, it's funny because we'll compare these from the English onomatopoeia to uh, the Korean i s o n g o but I'd love to hear if in your country, maybe you guys say something different. No I doubt. am very little knowledge on what the rest of the world says for some of these. So this first one, I guess we might as well stick with the dogs that sure. we're, we're starting with here. And I feel like in English, there are a whole host of ways to make dog sounds. Sure. But bow wow. The, yep. Oh, wolf, well, we had the bow wow, the arf arf, the mm-hmm. yip yip, the rough rough, the depending on the size, I think is how big they come out. But the most basic is the woof woof. Woof woof. That's the one I like. So. Yeah. And, and I feel like in Korean, the equivalent is very similar. there for it. it for woof woof what would we say okay so a little bit of egg in my voice here hopefully so mong 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 <laughs> mong mong <laughs> it's so cute but do you know what's funny is fun fact here i didn't tell daniel i was gonna say this but uh in korea we often will hear little kids call dogs instead of kangaji they'll be like mong mongi mong mong or right, so. or even funnier is because mong mong the way that mong mong is written sometimes when people kind of wrote it slop- sloppily they changed it over to Teng d e n g i so I'll, I'll hear mong mongi, teng d e n g i k a n g a j It's all these little cute terms for the little puppies. They're so cute. We love our puppies, right? So, <laughs> so once again, woof woof in Korean is mong mong. That was so cute. Danny. Oh <laughs> I'm my, trying, right? Oh my <laughs> gosh, you are hitting me right in the gut here. That's so cute. So the next one, it seems natural that we should just move on to cats. Then. Oh, of course, yes. Second on the list here. So in English, we might say meow meow. What would we say in Korean here. So. Yow, yow. Perfect. I think you nailed that. <laughs> yow. <laughs> I love it. It's so cute. But to be honest, mm-hmm. I'm going to be real. I feel like that yow much better matches than the meow that we have in English. When Very I hear, true. Yeah. When I hear a cat, honestly, a lot of the times it sounds like like that. So, Or like a lion, which yeah, we'll get to later. Right? Yeah. So. so I feel like I like the Korean one better. The yow, it just sounds more like a good match to Agreed. me. And, and just like for dogs, you can make this into a noun, too, by saying y a o n g i Exactly, mm-hmm. yep. y a o n g i I'll often, like, take videos on the street of the, the kilyangi, and I'll just be like, y a o n g a That's cute. It's so cute. <laughs> But uh, the next one here is we're talking about little piggies. We sure are. So when you do come across a little piglet on a city street somewhere, you can call them a k u l k u l Yeah. 
They're so cute. I love the little sounds in Korean that they make. Because in English, it's just oink, oink. And I've never heard a pig say oink, oink. Never in my life. But I have definitely heard the <laughs> quick, 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 quick. <laughs> so Pretty realistic. <laughs> and likewise, of course, gurkuri is a name for a for piggy. For piggy, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so then now we're getting into this one, which I feel a lot of our K-pop fans will know. Yes, I won't mention the band's name, but there was a song. Um, mm-hmm. It's this title. So if you hear a lion or a tiger roar in Korean, it would be Urarong. Yeah, so. it's just that Urarong, Urarong, Urarong. Nah, so, so. <laughs> I can, but but yeah, that's the term for roar, or we could even say growling too. I sure, feel like yes, they, yes. there's mm-hmm. a lot of like odong for the growling sound as well. Um, to be honest, I don't know which I like better <laughs> between the two, <laughs> but they just exist. Growl, roar, odong. So that's that one there. Perfect. Right. But these next couple ones here, this one is talking about little birds, right? Uh, yes, we have two very small animals here. So birds in English would be tweet tweet in mm. Korean, chick chick. Mm, yep, and I, I feel those are pretty much equal in yes. my my opinion. They're very similar. I hear both sounds whenever I'm listening to birds. It's that check check is the tweet tweet sort of sound that we have for. I often think of sparrows or like small little birdies flying around. Around Namsan, tons of birds. <laughs> oh, yes. But this next one here, we're talking about uh, little mice, right? Yes, we sure are. Mice and rats would go chick chick. Mm, which I think is cute because I picture like a little mouse with his cheese. And instead of saying squeak, squeak, which to me, no, uh, I feel like tick, 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 tick. just it's, nibbling away. right? <laughs> it sounds like he's nibbling. I feel like that's much more accurate than squeak. I don't know. Squeak sounds like a squeaky roller or something. I don't know. Agreed, yeah. Now, this next one is my favorite because I'm the most familiar with these animals based off of where I grew up. Perfect. Okay. So in English, uh, for cows, we would say moo. In Korean, meh. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that realistic? I have not come across a cow in my travels around the city. But, to be yeah. honest, the cows that I grew up with, it would be a lot of like, meh, like this. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my PDs and my team are like, why are you doing this on air, Kayla? Like, why are you doing this? But it's true. That's what they sound like. It's very much this guttural, like, sound. But I feel like umme sounds much closer than Just moo. moo. Yeah. Moo to me is a little too enunciated for a cow. <laughs> sounds, yeah, very strange there. <laughs> and finally, this one, which is the bane of my existence, is the rooster. Oh, I cannot stand this sound here. Oh, it's okay. This is actually my favorite personally. So there are two sounds that we can kind of make for chickens here or mm. roosters. The first one is kokodek. <laughs> and the second one is kokyo. Right. So, right. <laughs> And of course, the English matching term would be cockadoodle-doo, right? So, right? I was not prepared for this today. Apologies to everyone listening, right? So, oh, this is the best day ever. I'm so glad this is going to be uploaded onto all the streaming sites. This is amazing because, I'm sorry, yeah, a cockadoodle-doo is what we say in English, uh, which is, I've never heard a rooster ever make that noise, but I have heard the kukio one. That sounds the, Fairly realistic to me. Really? Oh, quite often. Especially when you go into the countryside. Hear them everywhere. Everywhere. And even in the U.S. as well. Perhaps not as much in my area, but when you go down to like the Florida Keys, they run uh, rampant out there. Just everywhere there are roosters and you will just hear... <laughs> Let me guess at the crack of dawn, yeah. too, right? Yeah, they are your personal alarm clock there. <laughs> Not too shabby, right? <laughs> but so, yeah, we have all these different types of uisongo that we had covered today. But there's also a lot of different sort of phrases and things that you can use these uisongo and sounds for, aren't there? Absolutely. So moving beyond just the, the silly kind of mimicking, which mm. is really fun. But uh, there are some abstract kind of, I don't know, metaphors that yeah. you could use, uh, kind of. So the first one I want to go over, very easy here, just to use the, the sound that... Um, Um, mice make, I would mm-hmm. say. So the example I have here is 무서워서 직소리도 못했어. So if you guys remember, we talked about how mice make that 찍찍 sound, right? Bingo. And so this is saying 무서워서 찍소리도 못했어. And that's like, it, it's so scary. I couldn't even make like a peep sort couldn't, of thing. Couldn't get a peep out, yeah. Yeah. I'm just scared as a, as a mouse or oh, a rat. Right? That's so, so, I can just picture that though. For me, that's anytime I see a clown. I, I can't make a sound. And I'm just like, nope, 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 not at all. 찍소리도 <laughs> 못했어. But what's this next one here? Because I see we've got the 으르렁 in it. Oh, this is a good one too. So, 왜 그렇게 서로 으르렁 되니? Now, 
what situation will we use this in? Oh, I don't know. If two friends or two little kids were kind of going at it and mm. you just want them to pipe down, like why are you two guys roaring at each other or going at it? Like yeah, that? it's that going at it kind mm-hmm. of feeling. Like why, you, just picture two lions, but like baby lions mm-hmm. and, and just kind of like at each other. Just like, why, why are you two going at it? Calm down here. Like keep it down. I yeah, guess. yeah, exactly. But this next one, I've actually not aimed at me, but I've mm-hmm. heard it before. What is oh, this? Oh, okay. So I have not heard this luckily. But anyway, uh, 술에 취해 왈왈 거리다. Yeah, that 왈왈 거리다. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 왈왈, we, we didn't cover that here mm-hmm. in our 의성어 list. No, no, we did not. What is 왈왈? So the definition here, there are two definitions. The first one is 개가 짖는 소리. So the mm. sound of a dog barking. Mm-hmm. The second example here is 알아들 수 없을 만큼 크고 소란스럽게 도드는 소리. So we're talking here about the 술에, 술에 취해. Mm-hmm. You're talking about drunk. Yes, yeah. someone who is inebriated, inebriated, intoxicated. There we go. That's a, a little too much. Right? <laughs> much nicer. Daniel's quick on the, the, better, the better phrases here. Um, and so, yeah, little intoxicated. And you've got this kind of mumbling dog sound here. That sort of noise that you And get. it's also rowdy and really loud. Yeah. yeah. And it just pictures, like, in my head, it fits an inebriated person Absolutely, quite well. Absolutely, yes. And, and, and that second part is saying that the 알아들 수 없을 만큼 is talking about not being, the, uh, the amount of not being able to understand. Exactly. That you have no idea what they're saying. It's really loud. It's a little rowdy. And it sounds like a dog barking. Exactly. Like, that's, unfortunately, can't understand it. Nothing we can do about it. But that's all right. Now, I know we have so much we want to get to here, and I feel like we have time for one more sort of like Yongo Sokdam translation oh, that we sure, can do, okay. maybe. Which here. one should we do? We have I, a couple. Uh, I feel like let's do the first one that you have here. I like it a lot. Okay, this is a good one here. So, and probably one of the more common ones. So, barking dogs seldom bite. Yeah, and that's the English uh, phrase that we use here that mm-hmm. barking dogs seldom bite. But what would that be in Korean? Well, I mean, say? a literal translation, I guess, would be. Mm. Right? Mm. So rarely bite or don't bite. But yeah. I guess a Korean proverb that would be more appropriate here would be Bin uh, Kang Tongi mm. So it's empty, but it's really loud. Exactly here. And so, uh, you know, we have all these different types of phrases and things that we can use for them. And there are so many more I want to share. But, you know, I feel like, especially after listening to Daniel's amazing Lee Sung-ho today, we got to make sure we get time for his uh, Oscar worthy performance. So let's take a listen to our final movie clip for today. <laughs> short, but it's such a beauty. Can you please do this, Daniel? Absolutely. And then we can go on to why it's funny. So, uh, 혼자야? 어, 아직 싱글이야. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen this movie? No, I have not. Oh, it's yet. great. Okay, so I'm a huge Mabali fan, so I, I watch everything that Madong Sok is in. Oh, he's but, awesome. I agree. But um, so basically, what the, the, we got to give context to it mm-hmm. first. So what the what this is saying here is, 혼자야 is saying, are you alone? And then Madong Sok's character goes, oh, 아직 싱글이야, which is, oh, yeah. I'm still single. <laughs> but, nice little wordplay, right? But, but why is this funny? What's the background on this? Oh, okay, here? so uh, totally mis- misread basically what the question was. So, are you still alone? As in, are you not married? Are you not, you know, do you not have a girlfriend? And then the answer is, oh, yes, I'm still single. Yeah. Right? So, he's asking, did you come with, th- with someone instead? Right? Yeah, yeah. So it, 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 it's funny because apparently this was just like a completely ad libbed line that Ma Dong Sok threw in there at the time and they kept it in there. It was Which is typical. I'm not even surprised that he uh, he adds his own little flair the in there. The best actors, right? Honestly, so, yeah. yeah. But it's just great because, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like these play on words and, and this kind of joke here. So I highly recommend if any of you uh, have time to make sure you try watching some Korean movies as well. They're always great for practicing your high level as well as just like conversational Korean. Agreed. Learn and, about the culture too. Exactly. And, and I feel like, you know, Daniel here, he does such a great job of keeping us updated on all these high level. things and makes it really fun. So thank you once again for a really fun lesson. Always a pleasure.